Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, segment three in our series on stamps. We're gonna talk about a basket weave. Now, to me, this is a traditional leather design. When we get this clean and straight, it's absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna talk about that, but we've got some cool designs too. We're gonna to look at every one of these. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, gonna take you straight to the website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over here, talk for just a minute, then we'll stamp some leather. I'm gonna do my best to resist making a basket weave video. We've got one, it's got all the ins and outs, but for the most part, we'll spend a minute over here. If you're new to stamping or new to the basket weave, there's two things we're gonna need. First off, let's case our leather. Good video on this, but in a nutshell, I'm gonna wet my leather. I'm gonna give it a little time to air dry, maybe an hour, drop it in a baggie, seal it, leave it there for 12 to 24 hours, pull it back out, and now I'm gonna give it some more air dry time because I want it to come back up to roughly its natural color. If we go to the trouble to do that, we are gonna get a beautiful, consistent stamp every time. Now, this is our Weaver Select eight to nine ounce. It's our natural strap. This is my absolute favorite for tooling and stamping. The second thing we're gonna need, and we talked about this in segment two, is an anchor line. Makes the whole thing very easy. So across my design area, I'm gonna drop in my square, and I'm simply going to scribe a line across the middle. We'll see this more in detail here in, here in just a minute. But now what I can do is work my basket weave out from that center line. We are gonna nail it every time. It's gonna be clean and beautiful, okay? Now over to a little bit of a side note. Again, I love the basket weave, but here's a good point. So say we've got a journal cover and we completely fill that with basket weave. It's gonna be beautiful. But in my opinion, it's just too much for the eye to see. Here's where I'm going with this. I like smaller panels. In fact, right here's a simple corner. Easy enough to make with our poster board. We simply fold it over, use our squares or our French curves, cut whatever we want. We open it up perfectly symmetrical every time. Added benefit. Let's just punch a, a small hole just about anywhere in this, but when we open that up, perfectly perpendicular to our design. So we've got a built-in anchor line. And in fact, our, our pattern sheeting, that makes a good pattern. So the point here is this, like with our journal cover, let's drop these in our four corners, maybe drop in a design in the center, that would be gorgeous. But also, there's less for the eye to take in. So I'm actually seeing more of the detail and more of our fine handwork. There we, there we go, that's the point. But we've got some cool designs here. Now for us period folks or the historical folks, we got some cool things to look at. All right, so let's jump over to our, our stamp table, take a look at some of these cool stamps. We've seen this tool in the past. In fact, this is technically a geometric tool, but in my mind, that's absolutely a basket weave. We're not really gonna spend time here because we've looked at that one but I love that tool. So let's start right here. We've got four tools that are basically our average shape and size. The inside design is gonna change on each. We've got some cool ones here. So let's do this. Let's draw four anchor lines in our leather. Good, we have our anchor line. So let's start right here. This is basically our standard basket weave. We've got a rope design in the center. But notice too, when we case our leather, notice how clean of an impression we're gonna get. Now, we'll get a good, we'll get a good close up of these, and in fact, we can compare these side by side. But let's start right here on our anchor line. Good impression, I can see every detail in that tool. Now, if you're new to leather, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the outside of this bar and I'm gonna butt it right up against my design on the inside, but let's take our time. Now, I'm talking and stamping, I'm, I'm gonna hope for the best, but let's take our time. There we go, perfect line. Now let's do that on the other side. Looking very clean and straight. I'm gonna add a couple more. And one more line just to give it a good look. 
There's our standard basket weave, but that looks good. All right, our next up. Now, if you love the historical, this is one of my favorites. We've got a Celtic knot design in the center, but this gives us a very clean impression. There we go. Look how crisp and clean we can see every detail. Well, I just love that. If we've got some Celtic knot work, knot work somewhere else on our project, that's going to be a nice detail. Next up, and again, for those of us who love the period stuff, I'm not sure if this is a Crusader cross or a Maltese cross, but it's a beautiful design. There we go. Crisp and clean, just what we're looking for. Well, I love that design. It really pops. That center looks great. It's burnished because of the stamp and the casing. All right, one more. Now, this is great if you want to go minimalist. I've never seen this design before, but it's very basic. But a cool part about this, it really brings out the basket weave design. Right there. Very simple, very basic. Let's do a few more. Well, I do like that. More of a less is more design, but it really stands out, doesn't it? Okay, so close up of this piece. Now, we've got our bottom standard, kind of a standard basket weave design. We've got our Celtic knot, our Crusader knot, and I guess what I'm going to call our minimalist. So, all right, let's reset. Look at a few that are a little bit out of the box. Now, these next two, we're not going to be able to use an anchor line. We looked at the tri-weave earlier. We've got a similar tool right here. And again, cool little Celtic knot work in the, in the center. But also, this piece of leather, perfectly cased. Watch how clean our impression is. Don't even have to try. And that is a good looking stamp. Okay, let's work out from the center here. Cool design, but notice how easily every stamp sits right in next to the other. Okay, a little bit larger basket weave here. A lot of tool here, so we're going to have to lean into our mallet just a little bit. Good impression. We can see every detail in that. Now, we've got these very prominent corners. So now let's take one of those corners, drop it in the previous, and the same on the other side. Well, how about that? That's a serious basket weave, but it's a good size basket weave. We can fill up a larger area without it looking so busy, okay? Let's, let's reset again. Let's look at some odds and ends. Let's look at some camouflage tools. Now, we have a number of these, but these two, I really like these. They have a nice touch to them. Now, if you're new to leather, you've probably heard of this called either a camo or a camouflage tool. Outside of carving leather, gives us a nice border. With our basket weave, it's got an offset in, so it doesn't look great. But if we drop in this, that gives it a nice border. But more than that, it actually makes it look like the design is slipping up under the top grain. Very cool look. Now, I love both of these. This is something I haven't seen. On the inside, both of these are fluted, very much like a veiner. It's a nice touch. So let's start right here. Pattern sheeting, we're just going to do a simple circle. There we go. Simple circle. But with this, there are two ways we can go. First off, notice out here I've got an actual line on the outside of my camouflage tool. To me, that makes the design look very self-contained. We can stamp right down on that camo line. We overstamp it. We never see it. But right there, that gives us a good look as well. That's just a personal call. So let's do this. Let's take our pattern sheeting. I've got my anchor, anchor line marks in this, so let's drop this in. 
I'm going to circle with a good line, not too heavy, but let's drop in a line that's, a, that's visible enough to give us that outside border line. There we go. Now let's just make two small marks and drop in our anchor line. I went a little heavy on that one, but I think we'll be able to overstamp that. Okay, there's our anchor line. Now let's see, let's take, there we go, let's take the Celtic and I'm gonna work my way across on my anchor line and then out. There we go. Okay, again, if you're new, notice how I'm starting to fade out. I'm actually going to lean back on the tool because we need about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Okay, let's jump over to our larger of the two camo tools. Now, these are actually fluted on the inside, very much like a veiner. So, two ways to go. First off, if we do not want that outside border line, I'll drop the very inside of that curve right on there we go, right on my, my anchor line, or my, my border line. There we go. Now let's do the same thing. I'm going to drop this corner right into the corner of that. There we go. Now I can see a little bit of that line. I should have pushed that out a little further. But here's what I tend to like to do. I'm going to take the edge of that tool, or the heel of the tool, and I'm going to drop that right on that guideline. Let's work that around. In all honesty, I need to back out, back off on my mallet, because that's not much metal on that head, giving us a beautiful impression. But that gives us enough of an idea. Very cool. Okay, let's jump over to our smaller camo. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, there we go, backing off on my pressure a little bit. I need to adjust that little heavier, little lighter, but all told, I can't really tell which I like best. I like that little fluted touch. That's a nice detail. Okay, let's jump over to some creative ways to use our basket weave. For this, let's jump back over to our Celtic stamp because here we're just playing. Let's see what we can do with this. So let's start right here. Well, pretty cool design thus far, but let's extend this out some. Well, now I could have lined that up a little bit better. But very cool design. I love these small cross hatches with the stamp detail in those. But now we've got these nice big boxes. What can we do with those? How about we jump over to one of our tri weaves? Let's see how this looks. Very cool, very unique design. How about we drop in a flower center? Well, that is very cool. All kinds of ways we can go with this. Here's another route. How about a borderline? Drop in a different stamp in between, just separate our basket weave, another type of stamp, or of course, my favorite, drop in our spots. So basket weave, not just for breakfast anymore. We can go some cool ways with these. Traditional or creative? We can go so many ways with a simple basket weave, and that's what makes it one of my absolute favorite stamp tools, and I love the look. All right, segment four. Going to try my best to contain myself here because we're going to border stamps. Can't wait to look at some of these. I hope this is good information for you. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.